Hello Time Savers family, welcome to part 3 of our video series on preventative maintenance and most frequently asked questions. Today we are going to be covering a brace belt tracking, uh, how to adjust it and also do some initial troubleshooting I guess of the components. Today we are on our hammerhead unit. Uh, I will be going through all the components that makes up the tracking system. Um, this is kind of a good overview here. We do have different configurations of tracking systems depending on what model it is. But on this machine here, I will be able to cover all the components that make up that tracking system. So first I'd like to start off by talking about the sequence of operation here to give you guys a better understanding of how this system works. Um, so when we go ahead and turn on the sanding head, the first thing that happens is the abrasive belt starts walking towards a set of photo eyes. Uh, these photo eyes are just like a garage door safety beam. If your foot trips it, it uh, you know, triggers the garage door to come up. Same thing here, um, when the abrasive belt blocks that beam, we actually put a voltage out to the solenoid valve. Uh, the solenoid valve will then open up, sending air to the tracking cylinder. And the tracking cylinder is what shifts this top by the roll to help steer the abrasive belt on the sanding head. Um, so once the idle roll starts uh, steering the abrasive belt away from the photo eyes again, once the beam is unbroke or once it can see itself again, uh, we de-energize that solenoid valve, closing air off to the tracking cylinder, and that's when it will shift back to its normal position again, and the abrasive belt will start walking back towards the photo eye again. Um, a good rule of thumb is to have the abrasive belt hit that photo eye every three to five seconds. So the six major components with any tracking system. We have the pair of photo eyes, which includes an emitter and a receiver. We have a solenoid valve, a tracking cylinder, we typically have flow controls on the tracking cylinder also, uh, along with a pressure regulator and a trim adjustment handle. And I will be going through each component and do some simple diagnostics troubleshooting with each of the components. All right, so here we're at the back of the machine, um, the inboard or the motor side of the machine. Here you'll find our tracking bracket. Uh, typically we have three components typically mounted on that. We do have the photo eyes themselves, the emitter and the receiver. Uh, we also have our tracking cylinder and some fl flow control valves. Uh, we do have two needle valves here. One controls the air going to the tracking cylinder and then the other one is for the exhaust. Um, but what I like to do here is just without turning on the head itself, just go ahead and use my hand here to simulate the abrasive belt so you can watch the action of the tracking cylinder. So as we simulate the abrasive belt coming through the photo eyes, we block that beam and you can see that the uh, tracking cylinder here is shifting that idler roll. So this helps steer the abrasive belt on the head. So when it's blocked, it's energized now. The solenoid valve is opened up and is making action out of the tracking cylinder, which will steer the abrasive belt away from the photo eyes. And then once the belt, the beam can see itself again, it'll put the idler roll in its normal position and the belt will start walking back towards um, the photo eyes here. Whenever diagnosing and troubleshooting a piece of equipment, it's always good to refer back to the sequence of operation. Uh, that gives you a step-by-step -step procedure and things to check and to find out what has failed on the system. So what I'd like to do now is just go through each individual component, give you some tips and tricks on things to check, um, checking the system as a whole. So the first thing I'd like to talk about are the photo eyes themselves. Uh, coming off the tracking bracket here, we do have a pair of, the pair of photo eyes. Uh, we have one which is the emitter which puts the beam out and then we also have a receiver here that receives the beam. Uh, inside this receiver we actually have an internal switch. When the beam is blocked you will see the indicator light come on the receiver itself and then the internal switch will close sending 120 volts out to the solenoid valve. So once the beam is blocked and it the internal switch on the receiver closes and we send that 120 volts up to the solenoid valve. The solenoid valve then opens up and sends air to the tracking cylinder. Um, this is a very good quick test to kind of help pinpoint what is wrong with the system. But if you go ahead and remove this air line from the tracking cylinder, you can go ahead and simulate the belt blocking. You should hear that change of state in that solenoid valve. So right now, this is telling me that the photo eyes and the solenoid valve are working correctly and that we are getting air to the machine. Next I'd like to talk about the flow control valves. Um, we have our air line here coming from the solenoid valve. 
going to the flow control valves. We have a supply and an exhaust. The supply flow control valve will dictate how fast this either roll shifts once the beam is blocked. The exhaust valve will dictate how fast it goes back to its normal position again once the beam can see itself. Um, this is a very good adjustment point for the system. If we have the flow controls closed too tightly, we're not going to get enough shift out of it where we could run into an abrasive belt mistrack situation or vice versa. These could be open up too much and we're sending too much air where it's reacting too fast which could put uh, the abrasive belt into the mistrack switch and shut the head down. So by making these adjustments, you know, you can kind of dictate the speed of the either roll and how it reacts. With these flow control valves, over time they may become out of balance. Um, we do have lock washers or locking nuts that are on the controls themselves. Sometimes they come loose, um, moving the valve stem, making the abrasive belt react differently. So a good rule of thumb here to get it back on track or at least a good starting point would be to go ahead and close both valves and then go ahead and open them up about a half a turn. That should give us enough air pressure so we can start the head and at least find out how it's reacting and make minor adjustments after that. Next I'd like to talk about the tracking cylinder and the, the spring itself. Um, this spring is used to return the either roll back to its normal position again. Uh, we typically preload this by an eighth of an inch. Meaning if this spring was three inches long, we would go ahead and turn that down, turn that turnbuckle so it compresses by an eighth of an inch, so the overall length would be two and seven eighths. Um, good place to check mechanically would be this turnbuckle here. Uh, this turnbuckle is actually double threaded to accept the eyelet and the shaft for the tracking cylinder. Um, sometimes this does become loose. When that does become loose that could put the either roll in an incorrect position for belt tracking. So this is a good visual check to make sure that this is still intact. Next I'd like to talk about the tracking handle itself. This is found on the belt loading side of the machine. Uh, this handle is actually attached to a rod that's going the full width of the sanding head and that is where the tracking cylinder is attached to. Um, we've actually created an eccentric on the back of that so as we turn this, I don't know if you can see this in the video here, but when we turn this, we're actually changing the pitch of that idler roll. So um, this is kind of our fine adjustment for the trim or trim adjustment on the sanding belt itself. So once everything is dialed in to how we feel is good, this here will just go ahead and make minor adjustments to the different abrasive belts that we're using. As we all know, the abrasive belts typically are not the same circumference from side to side, so we go ahead and utilize this to make up for those differences. The next step would be to go ahead and bump the head. Uh, once we feel comfortable that everything is dialed in, uh, we can go to our control panel here and spin our head and see how the abrasive belt is reacting. So on any of our machines, once if the belt loading door is open, we can go ahead and use the control panel for the jog. So once I press this green button, uh, the head will turn on. Once I let go, it'll start coasting to a stop. So that'll give us plenty of time. The belt will be traveling slow, slow enough so we can go ahead and make our adjustments. And I'll go ahead and show you how to do that now. Once you let it go, the head is jogging. You get plenty of time to watch that abrasive belt move back and forth in the head. You can kind of make your adjustments from there. By like turning it one way, it does speed up the oscillation. You kind of want to find that sweet spot where the abrasive belt hits the photo wire every three to five seconds. And this will conclude part three of our video series on abrasive belt tracking. Um, if after you go through these steps and you still have questions or problems, um, you can go ahead and call our service department. That telephone number is 1-866-298-9763. Or you can visit us at timesaversinc.com. Um, thanks for watching.